Boeing is 102 years old and your job is to chart the next yes. century. So you're working on everything from the next generation of commercial spacecraft to self-driving submarines to self-flying cars. Yeah. Of all the disruption looming in aerospace, mm. what are you most excited about? What will be the first to arrive and why? Well, this is an exciting time in the aerospace business. We have more innovation happening in aerospace than we ever have in our history. It comes in the forms of new products and services like our new 737 MAX and 777X commercial airplanes, new defense products, but also transformation in how we design and build robotics in our factories, uh, things like artificial intelligence, a new autonomous aircraft, new spacecraft, high-speed aircraft. So the, the time of innovation is incredible right now, and it's, it's a great way for us to draw talent for the future. I know you're an engineer at heart, and you've been at Boeing your entire career. So 33 you have, years. You have lived and breathed this, and, and you think a lot about the future. You think that self-flying cars will be here sooner than we think. How fast? Yeah. We see that whole uh, front of what I call urban mobility transforming right before our very eyes. So we're building prototype vehicles today. We expect to be uh, flying those vehicles within the coming year. Uh, we're also working with... The, so in the coming year, yeah, we'll self-flying cars will be flying in the Flying prototype air. vehicles, absolutely. And uh, we're working with the authorities like the FAA as well on the regulatory framework. So it's really important when you think about these dense urban environments where think about a future where you'll have three-dimensional highways to relieve traffic congestion and help people operate more efficiently. Not only do we need new vehicles, but we need an ecosystem that will allow that to happen safely and reliably. So we're working on both the ecosystem, the regulatory framework, and the new vehicles. All of that is happening now, and I would expect within the next five years, we'll see uh, initial operational capability being fielded. You bought a company that's making these vehicles for Uber, Aurora Flight Sciences. When will we see Uber deploy these? Yeah. Well, we're going to see Aurora uh, building prototypes and flying the prototypes next year. Uh, part of that will be their work with Uber and that interface as, as candidates for what Uber is thinking about. But there are a number of companies involved in developing prototypes and working on this future system. Uh, we're also working with a small company called Spark Cognition uh, on the idea of unmanned traffic management systems, to, again, to make sure that the ecosystem is safe. So the amount of capital investment happening here is very significant, and you're going to see rapid progress here over the next several years, and you're going to see Boeing with our partners right at the forefront. You're also unveiling a concept for a hypersonic plane yes. that can go back and forth between like New York and London in yes. just a couple of hours. I keep asking when, <laughs> but, but when would something like yeah. that be commercially available to someone like yeah. me? This is something, again, I expect to see happen over the next decade, so a little longer time frame. Uh, the hypersonic technology that we need, the propulsion technology, is in hand, and uh, we're demonstrating that on test vehicles like our X-51. Uh, but we also need to make sure the business case works, that the, the economics work, that there are enough passengers who would pay a premium to get anywhere in the world in two, in two hours. We also think that will mature over the next decade. And uh, you'll see the economics and the technology come together. So imagine a future that has today's commercial airplanes even more efficient, combined with hypersonic airplanes that connect the world any two city pairs in a couple of hours. You're the lead contractor for the International Space Station mm -hmm. and also one of the main contractors building NASA's space launch system that may take yep. the first astronauts to Mars. And let, yet Boeing doesn't get nearly as much attention as SpaceX or yeah. even Blue Origin. Yeah. Is that an oversight? Well, I think what it reflects is our approach as a company is we're very focused on working with our customers and doing the real work of enabling a space ecosystem. And in some cases, we're collaborating with SpaceX and Blue Origin, and we have great partnerships. In some cases, we're competing. But we're building that space ecosystem for the future. You know, our new Starliner capsule, we're uh, testing that vehicle now with a first launch next year. Uh, that will help us create a low Earth orbit space ecosystem. We're building that first rocket to Mars with our NASA customer today in the Space Launch System program. So this is reality. And uh, these are things that we're working on today and we'll be flying shortly. Have you ever thought about stepping up the tweeting like Elon Musk? Now I prefer to stick to getting our business done. You know, Boeing has thrived for a century because we stay close to our customers, we deliver on our promises, we provide real capability that's safe and affordable. And uh, we're going to continue to do that for the future. We know that people's lives depend on what we do. 
and we should do it with a great sense of excellence. SpaceX and Musk have said they can get to Mars in the 2020s. Mm -hmm. NASA's looking at the 2030s. I know you think you can get there sooner than the 2030s. You think you can beat SpaceX? We'll, uh, we'll with our NASA customer, we'll put the first person on Mars. You know, the, the fact is that when? we are the only <laughs> ones building a rocket today that's actually capable of going to the moon and to Mars. Not something on paper, we're actually building it today. Space launch system that we're working on with NASA, a 38-story tall rocket is being built today. We'll do initial uh, test flights next year. Uh, with NASA, we're going to return to the moon. We're going to set up a permanent presence on the moon, and from there we're going to step to Mars. Can you get it there in the 2020s? I think it's possible. Right? Now it'll require continued, you know, reliable funding, uh, continued success on our test programs. The technology is not the pacing item here. It is the will to do it and the, the capital funding to make it happen. But we're going to be at the leading edge here, and I still firmly believe first person that steps foot on Mars will get there on this combined NASA Boeing rocket. You're one of the largest U.S. exporters. You've got a very long supply chain. Mm -hmm. How is this trade war impacting Boeing? Well, it's something we're keeping a very close eye on. You know, aerospace is a thriving, growing industrial business. I would argue the strongest industrial business in the world. The world needs about 43,000 new airplanes over the next 20 years. Uh, only about 18 percent, less than 20 percent of the world's population has ever taken a single flight. So the amount of growth still ahead of us in the airplane business is extraordinary. It also depends on free global trade and free movement of people to be successful. So we're uh, very engaged in the trade dialogue. I think the good thing about aerospace is there's a lot of mutual dependency. If you take U.S. and China, for example, both economies thrive on a healthy aerospace industry. It's a great generator of manufacturing jobs here in the U.S. And as China grows, they need about 7,000 new airplanes over the next 20 years to create their increase in capacity. So we have a mutual interest here to find a trade solution that's balanced. But how long are you bracing for, for this to be prolonged before that solution, if it is reached? Yeah. It, it's not clear what the duration will be. Uh, what I will say is we're very much engaged in the, in the dialogue. We're at the table. Uh, we're having conversations with leadership both in the U.S. and China. And we are very much focused on trying to find solutions that benefit both countries. Uh, you know, there's some real challenges being addressed, some tough discussions around trade more broadly. And we all want a world that's based on free and equitable trade rules. At the same time, we want to make sure that those solutions are win-win solutions. And we see a way to do that in our aerospace sector in particular. Got to ask about the planes parked at your rent and assembly mm. plant since we're here in Seattle. Yeah. What are the lessons learned there, and what's the latest? Yeah. Well, these are the challenges associated with a growing business. So I like to say those are good challenges to have, but they're real. And uh, we've uh, taken the 737 production line from what was 47 airplanes a month last year to 52 a month this year to 57 a month next year. So we're ramping up rapidly. We're also introducing a new, more efficient model, the new 737 MAX. All of that affects our supply chain. So lessons learned here on supply chain management and how we integrate uh, the ramp up across our thousands of companies that work with us. And while it's been challenging this year, we worked our way through it. Uh, we're recovering well. I think you saw our August delivery numbers, which were headed in the right direction. We'll release September delivery numbers uh, next week. And we're continuing to make good progress on our recovery plan. So each one of these production rate increases, uh, we learn more about how to manage our supply chain and we'll roll that into the next one. Your Horizon X sort of mm. venture incubator arm, you yes. are investing in battery technology, 3D printing, AR and VR. It, are we seeing you basically outsource your R&D here? And, and how do you decide what to buy and invest in versus build? Yeah, I think you actually see us augmenting our internal R&D. So the amount of internal R&D, the, the capability, the technology that we're building for Boeing's future is greater now than it's ever been. But we're also tapping into some of these new small companies that bring additional innovation and technologies to the table. So it's a way to get a multiplying effect on our R&D investment. And uh, things like artificial intelligence and autonomy have incredible upside for us. Uh, new technologies around 3D printing, additive manufacturing, new manufacturing technologies writ large, exciting areas of development for us. So I see this as a way for us to get even more out of our internal R&D, build our capabilities for the future, and tap the innovation energy that's out in many of these small companies.